we have already learnt prepositions and we know that a preposition shows the relation between a noun or a pronoun and the other words in a sentence. So if we have a sentence as a bird is sitting on the fence, on is the preposition. It is showing a relation to us. The bird is sitting where? On the fence. So it is showing a relation between is sitting and the fence. Now let us look at this example. The keys are in the drawer. So in this sentence, in is the preposition. So the keys are where? In the drawer. In what? The drawer. So the drawer is completing the meaning of the preposition here. And the drawer is a noun along with the determiner, the. So the drawer is completing the meaning of the preposition. So the drawer is being governed by the preposition in. Hence, the drawer is the object of the preposition in, in this sentence. So what is the object of a preposition? The object of the preposition is the noun or the pronoun governed by the preposition so that it completes its meaning. It is usually used immediately after the preposition. She spilled the milk on the marble slab. Now what is the preposition in this sentence? On. She spilled the milk on what? The marble slab. So the marble slab is the object of the preposition here. Now in this part, the marble slab, slab is a noun which is being described by the word marble. So marble is an adjective here. And we have the determiner, the. So the object of the preposition here is the noun with its modifiers. It's my mom's birthday. I have baked a cake for her. So in the second sentence, we have a preposition. What is the preposition? For. I have baked a cake for whom? For her. So her is completing the meaning of the preposition here. So her is the object of the preposition for in this sentence. And the object of the preposition here is a pronoun. I wrote a letter to her yesterday. What is the preposition in this sentence? To. So in this sentence, we have the preposition to. And what is the object of the preposition here? Her. Because it is completing the meaning of this preposition. I wrote a letter to her. So her here is the object, which is a pronoun. Now can we ever say, I wrote a letter to she yesterday? No, we can never say this. It is not correct grammatically. So remember, that we can never use a subject pronoun after a preposition. We always have to use the object pronoun after a preposition. John is good at cooking. What is the preposition here? At. So John is good at what? Cooking. So cooking is the object of the preposition at here. And here cooking is a Gerund, it is the ing verb form which is acting as a noun. Hence, we can have a gerund as the object of a preposition also. So, we have seen that the object of a preposition can either be a noun or a pronoun or a gerund. Kelly sits beside me. Now, here, what is the preposition? The preposition is Beside, Kelly sits beside whom? Beside me. So me is the object of the preposition beside here. Now what if we would have a sentence as, Kelly sits beside 
me in the class. So what is the preposition here? In this sentence also, beside is our preposition. Beside what? Beside me. We have earlier seen that me is the object of the preposition beside. Do you think in the class is also an object of the preposition beside? No. The entire part is not the object of the preposition beside. Look at the sentence carefully. Kelly sits beside me. So me is the object of the preposition beside. But in this part of the sentence, in the class, we have another preposition. What is that preposition? In. So in what? In the class. So for the preposition in, we have another object governing it. Which is that object? The class. So in this sentence, Kelly sits beside me in the class, we have two prepositions, beside and in, and they both take different objects. For the preposition beside, the object is me, and for the preposition in, the object is the class. Now that we have learnt what are objects of preposition, let us quickly do this exercise. Identify the object of preposition in the given sentence. The given sentence to us is, the teacher is satisfied with her progress. What is the preposition here? With. So what completes the meaning of the preposition? The teacher is satisfied with what? Her progress. So her progress is the object of preposition in this sentence. Now let us look at this sentence. What are you waiting for? Now we know that for is a preposition here. But what is the object of this preposition? Now you might find it very difficult. How can I find the object of this preposition? It is actually quite simple. Let us rewrite this sentence in another way. We can write it as, you are waiting for what? So both the sentences portray the same meaning. To find the object of the preposition for, we have just rearranged the sentence in a different way. And what do we get? You are waiting for what? So what completes the meaning of the preposition for here? So what is the object of the preposition? And it is a pronoun. I love to cook. Now in this sentence, to cook denotes an action. We also know that to cook is an infinitive verb. So sometimes the preposition to is used with verbs to form infinitives. In such cases, remember that cook is not the object of the preposition to. To cook is an infinitive, to walk is an infinitive, but walk or cook which is following the preposition to is not the object of the preposition to. It was painful seeing her part with her friends. Now in this sentence, with is a preposition, but part with has a separate meaning. Part with together is a phrasal verb. So sometimes the preposition is used with verbs. In this case, we have used with the verb part to form phrasal verbs that portray different meanings. So part with here is a phrasal verb. So part with whom? With her friends. So in such cases, her friends, which follows the preposition with, is not the object of the preposition. Her friends is the object of the phrasal verb part with. So remember, 
in phrasal verbs the object of the preposition does not follow the preposition the object of the preposition does not exist now let us do this exercise identify the object of preposition if any in the given sentence dave called upon us last evening what is the preposition in this sentence we know that upon is the preposition here but here upon has been used along with the verb called to portray a different meaning so called upon is actually a phrasal verb in this sentence now when i say dave called upon us in this case us is not an object of the preposition upon but an object of the phrasal verb called upon so dave called upon us last evening has no object of preposition so what did we learn today today we have learned about object of preposition what they are and how we recognize them in a sentence don't forget to subscribe to our channel you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to get all learning resources as per icsc cbsc ib cambridge or any other curriculum over 5000 amazing lectures across maths science english and social science our unique interactive video technology keeps you engaged and our i dictionary feature allows you to quickly revise any concept master each topic at your own pace with our adaptive practice technology and 1 million plus questions get instant answers and detailed solutions be exam ready by taking unlimited mock tests performance analysis with actionable feedback personal tutors to resolve your slightest of doubts that's not all you can also win amazing prizes like playstation ipad watches and many more along with certificates through our earn as you learn program so learning at delta step is not just fun and easy it is also rewarding so register for free now